Hey divas and gents, long time no see. I thought I'd come to you with a little this and that video, just little tidbits I've been working on since I've been, you know, out of the YouTube world for for a little bit. <laughs> so these are just little items. I just, you know, just to keep me and my crafty mojo going because I tell you it's slipping. So um, anywho, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so my friend Laura, who's Robin Laura here on YouTube. Hey, girl. I watched her video. That girl is a great uh, ball of inspiration for me. So she had purchased these at Hobby Lobby. So, of course, I did it because I loved the pom-poms they made. And I made more, but I've already given them away. So I only have a few left to show you. These are highly addictive. Oh, my gosh. They are so stinking cool. And they're really affordable. I forgot what they were, but they were like, I don't know, $7.99, $6.99, something like that. Really inexpensive. So this is the largest pom-pom it makes. Is this not the cutest ever? So I just went to the, you know, my yarn stash and just grabbed at some seeing what i liked i need to buy some more yarn um and i love it this is um like the baby colors but of course it's the you know pastel -y colors so i love it look at how big this thing is it's a pretty big pom-pom but it's kind of fabulous then i made another um this is another big one but i cut it down so like this one right here i did not cut it down you know like when you're done wheeling it all up you can cut it down as much as you want to, but um, these are from the same big one. Who would have thought, right? Because look at that. But this one I cut down more. And all I did on this one, I was just messing around because you're going to notice, is you're going to be like, okay, how is that gray, pink, gray, pink? And it's like literally stripe here, stripe here. So I literally did this and I grabbed all the pink and then I did a good layer of pink then I did a, a layer of gray then I did another layer of pink so I was just messing with it to see how it look if you don't have a multicolored yarn and I just mixed two of them that I had so I, just, I was just messing with it you know it was not no rhyme or reason just checking it out seeing how it would look so these are super fun and easy to make man I don't know how you ladies that have made these without these tools oh my gosh I would have I couldn't have done it in fact I've tried and there were many failed attempts and also too, Susan Laverty let me give her credit as well because she made the most perfect pom-poms and I think um, she was the one that originally told Laura about these ones and she had mentioned it so thank you Susan she is an amazing ball of talent as well so these ones right here are the um they're little flex i had them squished up <laughs> but um this is the medium and the small one so this little itty bitty one and the medium size one made these two tiny ones they are so fun to make oh my gosh i'm dying they're so fun so um i did those and then for poops and giggles um i have this kind of yarn right here this really fun fuzzy one and i was like uh, here's a pom-pom i don't think i'm loving it it looks kind of i don't know i don't know if i'm loving that right it kind of looks creepy so yeah i was just messing like i said with what i had in my stash just curious how it would look if i did it as a pom-pom so I don't know. It depends, I guess, what, what look you're going for. But see? So that is that. Okay. And then my friend Marissa, Creative Young Mama here on YouTube, she used to make these by the buttloads. And I was just like, how do you do it? How do you do it? So she kind of walked me through the beginning steps of how to do it. And since I know how to crochet, you kind of figure out the rest. These are metal rings from Hobby Lobby. They sell them like four or five to a pack and they're multiple size. No, I'm lying. They had one same size. And um, so this is a metal one. This isn't the plastic kind that you can get from the dollar store, which she's also done. But I'm going to alter it and I'll show you when I'm done. I'm going to add the paper. I'm going to make it all super fabulous and adding stuff. But this is just the outside of it so far so um i just wanted to quickly show you these this was really fun to make and i am still like beginning intermediate level i am not hardcore level so i'm and once you learn those stitches it's so easy for you to just start intertwining your own when you know how they all work so that is that then i was inspired by muriel who is miss cooper's coop here on youtube hi muriel she did an amazing um she got made these 
candy cane thingies, but she used a certain type of fabric um, on here. And I was like, well, I want to use lace. <laughs> so I have a ton of lace. So I went ahead and just, I did them non-Christmas traditionally type colors, okay? Um, I want to just play with colors because I don't want to keep these just for Christmas. I want them laying around here. So this is what I did. I went into my stash. I used an applique. I used these right here and I tied them around and you can't see this one under here but this is multicolored and it is kind of fabulous there we go so it's like pink and blue it's just yummy it's kind of hard to tell because it really pastel and my light comes from that way so I crocheted a heart these are some old school leaves that Elizabeth used to sell at her store and I was so excited to run into those and I don't know where to ever get these again <laughs> Elizabeth, what am I going to do? So I have probably like a half a yard of these left. Oh, they're so fabulous because they're like a really soft, almost like a suede feel. And then I just put a button and some twine in there and that was it. I tied the bow. So you see the bow is back here and it just looks really pretty for gifting um, to put on a gift or whatever to lay around. I don't know. So I did this one in a pretty, um, they're shabby colors, but I thought I like it with pink and gray. It's kind of fabulous, right? Because that's what this is. It's a gray stretchy lace. Then I, you know, I love vintage. I love the old school. So I went ahead and made one in vintage. And I, of course, I just dug through some of my lace. These ones, I put little pearls underneath. If you see right there, I just put some I hot glue um, flat backs. And I did to the bottoms of these because these candy canes are from the Dollar Tree. And they're the, like this. And I bought these with the intention of using Muriel's um, um, inspiration. So I believe she used real ones. So I um, opted to use these ones right here because I didn't know how long the real ones would last in time. So um, yeah, I did that. So I used a really beautiful applique piece right here. I used um, this right here was from NSK. I had been a guest designer for her store and she gave me a ton of this right here. So thank you so much. Is your name Natasha? Oh, I can't remember, and I'm sorry. I believe it is. She's really super sweet, so I had a lot of this left over, and I love it. And I used this lace trim right here, and a really pretty light pink pearl, and that beautiful bling piece in the middle. So it's absolutely gorgeous, and they're just tying them around. So because they were red and white, you could see kind of through this. I didn't do it on here, but you could see right here. You can see the red and white there. But I didn't care too much because it was gray. It was a dark color. So I wasn't too stressed about it on this one. And um, But this one, I didn't really want it to show up like that. So isn't that fabulous? Oh, it's so beautiful. So I did those. So thank you very much, Muriel, for the inspiration on that. Then Shandi, I tell you, I've been stalking everybody's channels, so don't think I haven't. <laughs> Shandi was an inspiration on showing how to do these little crate crate crepe um little banner thing and she was putting these on um some of her projects so i just went ahead and followed her little tutorial that she did and i think i used probably about four layers of this and just fringed the ends by hand because i don't have the martha stewart ones and then i just used some of my trim that was in my stash in the middle and it has you know the eyelash trim so it just looks really fabulous then of course you know how to do one in yellow my face and then I used some of my really pretty daisy trim in the middle. Um, there we go. Yeah, so I just like it all crinkly and messy. And it's going to be perfect to add on cute little treat bags or even on a card, however you want to use it. So I was just playing with those. Those are six inch ones. I did this one right here and I mixed the yellow with the blue. So you can see how I intermixed those. And then I put that same trim, but this time I put yellow flat backs. Okay, there we go. So I put those there. So I thought that was fun. And then I did another one, but I just used a plain trim right here. I could have gone really extra crazy because those of you know, I'm like, you know, happy about over embellishing. I have issues with that. But this one I wanted to keep simple because whatever I use it on, I might heavily embellish on that. 
so I didn't want it to be too extra busy. So thank you very much, Shondi, for the inspiration on that. Okay, and then um, I went with Marissa. We went to the Sizzix um, warehouse sale, and um, I didn't go crazy. I went on a really strict budget. I'm not gonna, sh I didn't get nowhere near as many as she did. So, um, but I did get this one, which is, okay, let's see. It's called a Sweet Treat Bag. That was the number by Sizzix. And this is so cute because for years I've been making these by hand, but of course the ones I make, I don't have any handmade right now. They are bigger than this one. And I thought it was the cutest ever. So just for playing around, I this is the size it is. It is, oh my gosh, this is so stinking cute to make this. Um, for And it's, let's see, it's six inches long. So it's six inches by three. Yeah, by three, three and a quarter. And this is the cutest bag ever. I'm dying. And it's it, it's two swipes of this. And then these are some tags I made last year buying a kit from Shondi. She had a Christmas tag kit. And um, I put them together. And I made these ones. So I didn't use them last year. So I thought it was really cute. And I just tied it on one of these little skeleton thingies. But these bags are adorable. Now I just quickly put this together. I could have easily added a really pretty doily, folded it in half and oh, I could have gone crazy, but I just wanted to show you guys really quick, just to pop a tag and a cute bag. And it's so funny cause we would buy stuff like this from already made stuff. And it's really awesome to have the die so that I can, cause I do a lot of random gift giving and stuff like that. So it's really nice to have that on hand. Here's some quick cards that I made this right here. And this right here, I might as well show them both because they're pretty much the same. These right here are centerpieces that were gifted to me by Nat. Um, I don't know, if, I think it was maybe one or two years ago um, on some gifts. So, of course, when you see stuff like this, why would you throw it away, even if it's adhered to the packaging? So, I rip them off and then um, I just repurpose them. So, all I did was added a snowflake right here from the Dollar Tree. And then I popped off the bow that was there. There was a bow that was there. It wasn't really going with what I was doing. So I just added on some um, of these little leaves. It's a um, Tim Holtz punch. And then I popped in one of these Prima flowers. And I used up, for, I used up, oh, I went to Frank's tag class and it's like sweet peppermint. I don't know which one it was that he made that he designed. And I used every bit of those scraps. I did not want to throw any of it away. So <laughs> that is what you're seeing back here. And I did the same thing with this one. I just put a different Prima flower here, but this is the same scraps from inside. And then I just added a few little banners. I thought that was really cute to repurpose it. And then you never know. I don't think I designed the inside. No, I just put a little, um, a little embellishment inside. But these are really cute because now they're cards. Now I can re-gift these. So I absolutely love, love repurposing. Then here's a card that I made using all of the same thing from Frank's paper line. And so everything you see there, all the flowers are all from his line. These are some jingle bells that I had left from my card, my tag class. These right here are snowflakes that I purchased. They're wooden snowflakes that have silver on top from Michaels. And of course these are from Michaels as well. These little, whatever they're called. And then, so see, it has like a little jingle cause I have three of them here. And then, of course, um, this is the punch from Tim Holtz. I love that punch. And then a couple more of these snowflakes from the Dollar Tree. And this is also part of his embellishment um, stack that was there. There is a there was original tag that was here. I covered it because I wanted to use what said Merry Christmas instead. And then I put another snowflake here. This is um, part of a se um, sequence pack from... Hobby Lobby. These right here are those little Insta frames that I got from Joann's uh, many moons ago because I have an Insta camera and Stax camera. So I just use this because it just happened to go along with what I was doing. So I thought it was really pretty. I didn't, oh yeah, I did. And then I just used some more of the ephemera from his class. So you take a class from him, you are going to use every bit of what he <laughs> puts in those kits because there's plenty. So I was super excited. And here's that gift or that. Christmas card. Then Tara, who's Nurse Tara here on YouTube, she was an inspiration for these shakers. 
these shakers right here are made from the Dollar Tree. They come, they look like this when you take them um, out, but they come with these really beautiful butterflies inside that are gorgeous and I love them. I have them in every color. So she was pretty ingenious and came up with the idea of using these as shakers because you can see you got about a half an inch give in there. So that's what I used to do this. She did not do um, a tutorial on this, but she did walk me through how to do it. So this is my shaker. And then there is um, a die cut. This is a die cut that I used. And it came with that. And then I used this punch die. And then I just recently purchased the bow die, or not, bow punch from um, Tim Holtz. And I got that at the Sizzix Warehouse. It was only four bucks. And then that is it. And those are just the different type. I use those really pretty little foily thingies from, um, is it Go Washi? I forgot. They were at the expo. And um, so. I used those in there and then I used some little snowflakey type confetti. I didn't use any sequins. I just used those. No seed beads. No, no, I'm lying. There's some seed beads in there. Yeah. So, and that's that. And then this is the back. Once I cover it, I put white so that I can go ahead and write on the back. And then here is the second one. Okay. So this is really, really pretty. And then this right here was also from Frank's class. I had made an extra one and saved it because I knew I was going to use it. So fabulous. I love it. And then, of course, I put the bling. I did the same thing with here. I put the um, flat pearls all the way around. You can get at Hobby Lobby. And then I used the wooden snowflakes and silver right here. And I put little those little bling thingies in there. And then I used... Let's see if I can... And then I put a couple chipboard pieces right here and all I did was took the sticker off the back and I just rubbed some um, glitter, Martha Stewart fine glitter on the back or you could use baby powder just to remove the stickiness from it. And then I have green sequins, red sequins, red seed beads. I put like some confetti type of um glitter in there because i wanted it to stick this time i actually wanted it to stick because i wanted it to kind of look like snowfall because you have all the little snow houses there so that i did not mind that it stuck like that and it just says deck the halls the back part i haven't put the white part on it yet which i will but this is how it goes so super briefly super quickly quickly because i only have a few minutes left these are how they come this right here slides out after you cut off the little edge you just cut off the little edges and you slide it out and all I did was adhere the paper onto here I added um, the paper on the front but I didn't add it on the back because I had to wait to slide it back in because you don't want the these tabs right here to show but I wanted to keep this card to slide in so then when I got my second piece of paper I laid it over the whole top part of it so the first piece of paper gets on this, on the middle piece right here, and then you slide it in. And then you put the other piece of paper over here. And then you could add, because once you um, put the whole thing there, you wanna add a little piece right here, some type of something to cover this top part. Add your bling all the way around. Stick your shaker stuff in. And then I use red line tape to adhere everything on this so that nothing comes out. So, and that's pretty much what I did. It's really super simple um, how to make these and it's a great repurposing of these. So thank you so much, Tara, for that inspiration. And you know, I got to show you ladies some jewelry. Okay, so um, I did make some, just a little bit, not too much, um, but I did make some more. I did another one of these um, adjustable bracelets. I had to do another one and I'm starting to work with colors that I tend to not gravitate to as much, but I'm starting to dig on red. Look at the little angel, it's adorable. They finally have little mini wings at Michael's. I was so excited to get those. Oops, sorry. There we go. And then these are the beads that I used. Just yummy. Just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 
Then of course I went ahead and I was like, you know what, let me get some red wire. So I was like, let me start messing with some colored wire. Normally I, I don't do that. But since I had the black one, I was like, let me try red. So I did with a bunch of white, beautiful dangles. So fun. And then it's all in red. And I got this, <clears throat> excuse me, at Michael's, I believe. Super fun. So I just did one of those dangle rings that I showed you ladies how to do. And I did it in red. It's so pretty. So that's with that one. Then I did this bracelet right here. And this is a super easy bracelet to do because I already had yummy beads. And that's what makes this bracelet. These are really heavy because these are lamp work beads. And they're gorgeous. And then I just, I bought these adjustable pieces from Michaels. I'm going to start adding a lot of those to my bracelets when I'm gifting or when somebody buys them for me only because not everybody's wrist is the same and it's really hard to just make a bunch of bracelets in different sizes. So it's easier just to buy an extender type of closure so that it'll fit for all sizes. Okay. And then just a little heart there. So I thought it was really, really pretty. It's just really gorgeous. Okay. And then I don't know if I have shown these ones. I don't think I did. But if I did, these are another set that I've made. <laughs> so I did another one in red and I did yellow. I just love the combo together. And I have a couple of these that I made. So those are yummy. These big flower beads I purchased from downtown LA. Y'all know that I love going to downtown to buy my stuff for my beads. And it's just so fun, right? And then I used another one of these big ones right here for this blue one. Tell me that's just not fun. That is just stinking fun. And every time I wear mine, I always get compliments on it because it's like a statement ring. It's a pretty big uh, cabochon that's on there. And then I did this one. I think I may have shown this one. I don't remember. And this is using the twisty wire, which I'll never buy again. It's not good. This is by Artistic Wire. And they had one that looked like that was twisted like that. It's ladies, it's not a good wire for this, so don't use it. Um, this happened to hold up really well. It, what it is, it's two wires that they intertwine to one wire. So when you cut it, it can come unraveled. It's not like, you know, soldered together. So that was the only thing. And then not to mention, I use a 20 gauge when I do these. And this is also a 20 gauge, but it's thinner. So it's um, it bends a little easier than the regular one i mean it sucks because honestly it is actually really pretty i do like that look but um it's 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 just not um something i would invest in again but i love this ring and last but not least i did a very big dangle bracelet okay now this is a creative memory bracelet i believe that's who it's by it could be lying hold on um it says on the tag nope i'm lying stampin up it's a stampin up bracelet that was gifted to me years ago and it came with this cute little locket i'm leaving this open because it's being gifted to my sister so she could always put something in here um, we love dangly stuff like this. So I went and Michael's had a bunch of stuff, these charms that already had the lobster claws on it. So I didn't do none of the beadwork, ladies. I will, I cannot take credit. These were all previously done. They all had the lobster claws. All I did was um, latch them on the bracelet. That's it. This is not, none of it is hand beaded by me, which normally I do my own hand beading on these, but it was nice to take a break and not do it yourself all clearance for Michaels, some really fun beads, actually these exos have like really pretty um, like blings in the metal. See how fun? That is just so fun, so pretty, and I absolutely love it. So this is it, ladies. It's been a while for doing this and that, but I think um, I like to do these when I'm running low on mojo because then I just do little stuff here and there. But I've been watching everybody's videos and thank you guys so much for watching. I miss you guys so much. I know I need to get my A game 2017. I have some ideas that I want to do for next year for my channel. So thank you guys so much for hanging around and thank you everyone for your inspiration to my new subscribers. And um, if I don't put anything up before Christmas, have an amazing and beyond blessed Christmas. 
and I'll see you guys later. Bye.